Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays. Today I'm going to talk about interplanetary logistics, that is, ways of moving materials around in Factorio space exploration. There are currently four ways to transport goods, and whilst you'll unlock them one at a time, there are trade-offs between them that mean you're likely to continue to use the older ones even after the later ones are available. The smallest and simplest option is the delivery cannon. Once set up, the only consumable is delivery cannon capsules, which can be made relatively easily on most planets. They do require all of the basic resources in one form or another, but the infrastructure to build them is fairly simple, and most planets have most resources. Any that are missing can always be brought in by another delivery cannon. Once you've built a delivery cannon capsule, it can be loaded into a delivery cannon with a stack of a raw resource, and then sent to any other location in the same solar system. Each delivery cannon can be configured to target a single delivery cannon chest which receives the supplies. If you want, you can have multiple delivery cannons delivering to one chest, but you can't make one cannon automatically deliver to multiple chests. So, on the positive side, delivery cannon capsules are quite cheap at about 93 resources per capsule, and they don't require any fuel. On the negative side, they only carry a single stack, they're very limited in what they can carry, and you will need some form of communication system to ensure that the cannon doesn't overfill the receiver chest. Sending a capsule to a full chest will cause an explosion, damage to the surrounding area, and loss of the resources you are sending. But don't worry, I'll show you how to set all that up later in the video. Finally, don't forget that they only work inside the current solar system. You can't send them into Stella. The next option is the cargo rocket. These massive rockets can carry 500 stacks of anything at once, can go anywhere, and even allow the player or a Spidertron to ride along. However, as you'd expect, the rockets are much more expensive to make. Where the delivery cannon capsule costs about 93 resources to make, the rocket costs about 80,000, and the assembly is significantly more complicated, using much more advanced intermediate components, as you can see here. Because the rocket carries so much cargo, this isn't quite as bad as it seems. Per stack, the cost is only 160 resources, however the construction process is still complicated enough that I wouldn't want to build it up in an outpost. Rockets will fly to any landing pad with the correct name, and won't leave until the landing pad they're headed for is empty, which means you don't need any communication systems, and you only need one rocket silo per, per resource, instead of needing one for each destination. This makes things a bit simpler to set up, however you will probably want to ship the rocket parts out from your central factory, and, but you'll still need to generate rocket fuel on site. The amount of rocket fuel used depends on how far the rocket is travelling, but it can require very large amounts for going between planets. Another major downside of rockets is that they have a tendency to lose cargo. Sometimes the rocket will crash on landing, scattering the cargo across the landscape, and even on a successful landing, a small proportion of the cargo will be lost, so make sure you pack some spares. Later on, you'll do research into rocket improvements. These reduce the amount of cargo lost, the chance of crashing, and also the number of rocket parts you get back to be reused, but it will take about 8 researches to get the 50% rocket reuse needed to make the rocket cheaper per stack than the delivery cannon. I should also mention that the flexibility of rockets makes them very useful for establishing new outposts. You can fly out in your rocket with all of the machines you need, that 500 stack inventory will go a long way, but don't forget to consider how you're going to get back home, since you won't have your rocket anymore. The next option you'll discover is spaceships. Finally, we found a fully reusable transport system. Spaceships can be flown manually, or programmed to follow a specific route. See my spaceship automation video for more information on this. The only resource that gets consumed with spaceships is fuel, and you have a, a choice of different types from rocket fuel, ion stream, up to, even up to antimatter. Sin and since you can send your ship out with enough fuel for the complete round trip, this means that your outposts can now concentrate just on resource extraction, rather than having to build and fuel rockets as well. Spaceships do only use fuel, but they use significantly more of it than rockets, and they tend to be harder to load and unload quickly and efficiently. They also take time to fly between locations, whereas all of the other options are instantaneous. When you first start building spaceships, you'll be able to fit a single warehouse into them, giving them about the same capacity as a rocket, but after you've done some more research, you'll be able to make much bigger spaceships. Another major advantage of spaceships is that they are the only system that can carry fluids between planets without using barrels, and you can also use them for two-way transports, perhaps 
taking iron and sulphur out to a mining colony to be made into acid and then bringing the dug up resource back in the same warehouses. The fourth and final option is Arco chests. These are chests with a shared inventory which can be placed on different planets. Anything you put in one chest will be available in the other. This allows for instantaneous transport of goods as fast as four inserters can load them. The upsides of this are pretty obvious. There's no ongoing resource costs and no limit on what can be transported, apart from liquids. The very significant downside, however, is that they require Arcospheres to build, and Arcospheres are very hard to get hold of. I haven't used these chests yet in my playthrough, and to be honest, I don't expect to. I think there are much more valuable uses for the Arcospheres I do find. That covers the four systems available for transporting goods. At the moment, I'm actually using all of the first three for slightly different reasons. Delivery cannons are great as a cheap and simple way to transport small amounts of basic resources. I use them to transport ice to outposts which don't have any water. I use them to send a trickle of iron or copper for making meteor defence ammunition on site. I used to use them for sending out uranium for nuclear power plants as well before I started using beam power. I wouldn't want to transport material en masse with them, but they're good for small quantities. Rockets are good for mass deliveries. Most of my raw resources are brought from Norvis to my space station by rocket, and in this context raw resources includes all types of circuits, low density structures, and so on. The flexibility of being able to transport anything is extremely useful. I also used to use rockets to bring a supply of building materials, belts, machines, memory card substrates, and so on, up as well, but I've since replaced that with a spaceship. If I was building a new transport route, I'd go with spaceships from the start because they don't require the extra logistics of rocket parts, but where I've already got a rocket system set up, it doesn't feel worth replacing it, at least until something goes wrong. Spaceships have two major advantages. They don't need any new parts once they've been built, so that eliminates logistics at the pickup end, as they're f and they're far more flexible. You can get a spaceship to do almost anything you want as they are completely configured through the circuit network. This does make them more complicated, but it also makes them flexible. Think trains, but with more options and a more complicated user interface. So as you can see, all three options have their uses, even if I feel that rockets are mostly outdated at this point in the game. If I do do another space exploration run, I'm very tempted to try to minimise rocket usage, just using them for new outposts and using delivery cannons elsewhere until I can rush spaceships. The next thing to look at is communications, but first, to make sure you don't miss any of my communications, make sure you've subscribed to the channel. I'm trying to hit that magical target of a thousand subs and I can't do it without you. Communications also allow outposts to request the resources they need, allowing delivery cannons to only fire when there's room to, and for your mall to supply the specific building materials that are actually needed. This is achieved by feeding signals into a signal transmitter, a rather power-hungry building that essentially links a circuit network to its counterpart next to the signal receiver. Each transmitter and receiver can be given a channel name so you can ensure that all of the separate signals are kept, are kept separate. The obvious way to set up your communications is to connect your delivery cannon chest or landing pad to the transmitter, and only load the other end when the total falls below a specific value. However, I would advise a different approach. Instead, put a constant combinator next to the transmitter and program this with the negative of your requirements. This way, you can tell the other end to only launch when there is less than zero of that resource. This means that if you have a power cut at the transmitter end, you won't end up with unexpected deliveries. At the sending end, if you're using a delivery cannon, you can either load it with the resources all of the time, but only loading the delivery cannon capsule when you see a signal less than zero. This prevents the cannon from firing when the resources aren't needed, but it means you can react quite quickly when the resources are required. The downside is that you could end up with the cannon firing more than once, but the delivery cannon chests are quite big, so that's usually okay. Alternatively, just ensure there's always some buffer and load the resource when it's required. This will make it very unlikely that the cannon ends up sending an excess of the resource. This communication system isn't required for basic rocket deliveries of a single resource. You can just load the resource into the rocket and then let it take off when it sees an empty landing pad. My only extra piece of advice with loading rockets is to set the resource inserters to not start until there's a complete rocket available, otherwise you can end up with no space for the rocket parts. With spaceships, the ship can be set to fly out to the destination, remain there until empty, then fly back and remain until full, much like a train, which means you don't need to worry about the communication side. If the spaceship arrives at pickup, it clearly needs, needs some more resources for the other end. 
Once you've got a space station base up and established, you'll want it to have a supply of a number of different resources and buildings to allow you to continue your expansion. And it's typically easier and cheaper to build everything you can on the planet and then ship it up either in a rocket or a spaceship. This is both because it condenses everything down so you don't need to transport as many items, and because on planet you can use productivity modules to increase the yield. To make this work, I currently have a more complicated version of the system I was just talking about. I have the same constant combinators connected to a transmitter, but this time the combinators have lots of different items programmed into them, all with negative values of what I would like to have available in the space station. These combinators are wired into every chest that stores the resources on the space station, and then also to the transmitter. At the other end, the receiver feeds out the same signal. This signal is passed to various belts supplying materials that are supplied in large quantities, and also to a blue requester chest that requests items that are required in smaller quantities or are simply too hard to fit onto the main bus. If I've gone through all of that a bit too quickly, don't worry, for next week's tutorial video I'm going to run through the process so you can see every step of it. If loading these into a rocket, you can then set it to launch when its cargo is full, and providing the landing pad at the other end has been emptied by then, the rocket will automatically head off as soon as it's ready. Using a spaceship instead of a rocket is more complicated, as unfortunately there's no way to read whether a warehouse is full, so instead I've put in a splitter on the input belt with the priority set to the lower side. When the warehouse fills up, the belt backs up all the way round, and items come out of the upper side of the splitter, where I read the belt contents. As soon as that shows items, I know the ship is full and ready to leave. These are more complicated methods of transporting material around, however I feel they are definitely worth it because they can keep your space station properly supplied with anything and everything you want, and if you realise you've forgotten something, you can just add it to the shopping list in the combinators and it will turn up on the next rocket or spaceship. Just make sure that all of your storage is connected to the transmitter, or you might end up with a lot more of something than you expect. All in all, there are lots of ways to transport supplies between planets. You'll probably find yourself working through most of them during a space exploration run, with different ones working best at different times, or for different uses. Have you done anything very different, or, or perhaps an interesting implementation of a similar idea? Let me know in the comments, or come along to the stream on Wednesday evenings and we can talk about it live. Thanks for watching!